Hello everyone, how are you all doing today? Welcome to PW IAS and as promised, today I am here with the paper 2 analysis of public administration mains question paper 2024. Like I told you earlier in paper 1 discussion also that this is one of the most easiest paper of public administration that has come out in this last many years. Questions were very direct. It was from the expected areas. Scoring is not a problem if you have connected it properly with your theory and you have put relevant examples and most importantly, you have not written it like a GS paper, especially GS paper 2. Clear? So without any further delay, let us quickly go into the analysis part here. <clears throat> so when it comes to evolution of Indian administration, we have two questions. Philosophical and constitutional framework of government, you don't have any questions this time. PSU, you have two questions again. Union government and administration, there were five questions. Plans and priorities, two questions. State government, two. District administration since independence, you don't have any major questions. Civil services, you have four. Financial management, two. Administrative reform since independence, you hardly have any question. Rural development, one. Urban local government, one. Law and order, three questions. Significant issues in Indian administration, four questions. That's the nature. But overall, how? what can we say? Overall, the point is, it is again, paper two, always UPSC has maintained one standard, which is, it is reflective of whatever is happening in the newspaper. Like the current affairs, when we talk about, the paper was a reflection of that too. So, your knowledge of the static portion, your awareness of the current affairs, both matters. Getting the picture here. So, without any further delay, let us go to the questions. And this is our Telegram channel. Any queries or concerns that you have with regard to public administration, you may contact me here in this channel. I understand not all of you who are watching this channel may not be my students, but it is fine. Even if you are part of any other academy also, I know it that many of you will not be having the privilege of actually contacting the faculty directly. Here you can contact me directly and you can ask me your concern. Just because you are not enrolled for public administration doesn't mean that I will not extend my help for you. Because ultimately, everybody knows cracking UPSC is not an easy task. And sometimes maybe that one extra information that you get from the faculty is all that you probably need to make it all the way to Labasna. All right, people. So this is the channel. The first question, ethics in public services has been the main concept of Kautilya Sartha Shastra examine the statement. A very direct question. Because Kautilya Sartha Shastra talks about various tests to be appointed into the service of the king. And for that, each of the test is basically looking into whether you are having any lust, are you greedy for money, are you a lazy person, are you somebody who spends money a lot. So, there are different tests for it. So, in a way, if you see, it is ethical. But at the same time, it also talks about how to dispose of a king, how to eliminate an ineligible son, that is, he is ineligible to be a king and how to spy on your enemies, etc. So, all these other stuffs are also being talked about, which in the modern sense doesn't sound ethical, nor does it even sound in sync with rule of law. Getting the point? So, as you see, I have somehow squeezed rule of law into it. That is equal protection and equality before law. So, that way, I am bringing in a paper one theory into it easily. And it's only for 10 marks, just two pages you need to write. By the time you write what is ethical in Arthashastra and what is non-ethical and how it violates Dicey's rule of law. And finally, when you conclude it, considering the time period of Kautilya, just like other thinkers, when we talk about classical thinkers or human relation thinkers, we always say they were a product of their times. Kautilya also was a product of his times. When it comes to uh, traditional leadership or borderline charismatic leadership, Whatever administrative principles he gave was a product of his times. With that, your answer is over. Clear, people? Moving on to the next question. The Mughal administration was by nature centralized. Analyze. Centralized, despotic rule it was, with exceptions during Akbar's rule, etc. 
but otherwise it was largely despotic everything was under the king you couldn't actually criticize the king the king was the be all and end all the mansabdari system the uh, system of uh, uh, what is it giving collecting the taxes collecting the revenue all of that you can mention there clear people so again a very direct question directly from mughal administration or generally the first chapter when we talk about maximum earlier it was like one question you will get but this time upsc broke that trend asked two very direct questions and this is not even optional you this is compulsorily you have to attempt it so that is the trend that change we are seeing this time <laughs> So that is the change in trend we are seeing this time. Clear people? Moving on to the next question. Autonomy to public undertaking is a myth. Analyze. Again, a very direct question. When we talk about PSUs, especially when we were discussing it in the class, etc., I gave you the reasons why autonomy is a myth. Again, with regard to the Maharatna, Miniratna, Navaratna, to what extent they have the autonomy, why it has not been successful, and today, how is this autonomy being ensured? We had talked even about MOU and the data with regard to it. All this have been discussed in class. The only challenge, if you really ask me for this question, is to compress it. Why it is a myth? It is a myth because of XYZ reason. Right? Ministerial control will be there or through the board also if you are trying to do it. Then also ministers get involved in it. Then but there is a change happening. And what is the change? The MOU culture you can mention and you can wind up your answer there. All right. And this is one more example why uh, politics administ this is an area where politics administration dichotomy is essential. You can ensure accountability, but we need to keep politics away from the day-to-day -day administration of PSUs. That is the paper one that you need to throw in here. Clear people? Taking it further forward. It should be people's prime minister's office. It can't be prime minister's PMO comment. So people's prime minister's office, when we say we are talking about a more of a participative management or a democratic leadership where it is easily accessible for the people. Prime minister's office, they are able to access it, access it as well as PMO is also able to maintain contact with the public. But historically speaking, there was never any office as such. From 1947 also if you take to all the way till 2024, there has been no such office which, which could be called exactly people's PMO. That is the point. PMO office unfortunately has always been driven by two things. Coalition government and personality of the Prime Minister. Especially when it is a coalition government, is the closest thing that would have come as a people's PMO. Because obviously you are having a coalition government. The Prime Minister has to listen to the, all the coalition parties, which is far more representative than a single party. And whenever it has been under single party and a strong personality PM also is there, obviously it has ended up becoming performing like Prime Minister's PMO. So that is the case. So should PMO have so much of power? Or should PMO's power be toned down? Again, it is a matter of situation. It depends from situation to situation. Because in some cases, you need it. Uttarakashi tunnel disaster. Best example. Where Prime Minister's office was directly involved in coordinating multiple government sector companies. So as to enhance the rescue efforts. Getting the picture. Other times, PMO has been under controversy. For what? For bypassing the Ministry of Defense and directly getting involved in the Raphael deal which came under much public scrutiny as well as judicial scrutiny. Getting the point here. So those examples you will mention and finally the conclusion will be what? The conclusion is that <clears throat> Prime Minister's office again shouldn't supersede, shouldn't act like a super arching body. Power should be limited. and But that limitation can only come if the if the entire government is not known for the Prime Minister alone. You should have a government where everybody, all the ministers are functioning, then the power will get toned down. Otherwise, the Prime Minister with a strong personality may supersede the Cabinet, the Central Secretariat or even the Cabinet Secretariat. Answer is over. Clear people. Taking it further forward, 
implementation of gst has led to a paradigm shift in the center state relations both financially and politically so gst based question uh, if you really ask 2017 gst was introduced and gst has come back again and the reason if you ask me constantly it is in news now how has it changed things politically politically it has changed because states are no more it is no more a top down communication between center and state it is more like i have already told it is bottom up states are able to air their grievances they are able through the gst various gst committee meetings they are able to air their grievances and they are able to bring changes into the slab rates of various goods and services you can give a few examples with regard to it <clears throat> and that is the first thing second thing is second thing is when it comes to even gs providing gst compensation etc now politically also it matters politically how it matters is gst compensation says which was agreed for a period of 5 years now today that is the biggest bone of contention between the center and the state especially for example with the state of kerala which has been constantly demanding that we we have not been provided adequate money etc so that is one major bone of contention between the two second reason is with gst what has happened is things have become even more transparent with the input tax credit getting uh, credited etc what has happened is every fact every detail state has to provide the correct picture to the center for any financial amounts to be released or any queries or concern asked by center state is answerable now so in such a scenario what has happened is it has caused friction between the center and the states especially where the political parties are different but in the center and state there it has led to conflict and it is it has and the main reason for that is the different political parties getting the picture here and that has led to multiple conflicts for resolution for the purpose of resolution and for the or the, for the purpose of integration it is important that state should follow the proper guidelines provided by the center with regard to filing or making any claim with regard to igst or even sgst any claim that they want to make they have to make it very clear why it is so it the whole thing has become very transparent now whereby which the conflict can be resolved getting the point here so that is the thing it is all data based and that as a result of which the usual political mudslinging it will not work anymore and because it is data based even judiciary is also able to provide a solution to the center state conflicts clear people that you will mention now 20 marks the national data and analysis platform of niti aayog facilitates a robust ecosystem to promote democratization and inclusivity in development discuss a very direct question once again a reflection of the current affairs and uh, what has been coming in the paper so if you were following the paper and if you would have read this at least once especially with regard to the chintan shiver etc in the news it was there then you could have wrote this answer clear people so it's a very direct question what is it etc easily mentioned but what paper one theory will you mention here paper one theory we will mention here as the importance of democratization decentralization and how this gives more power delegation of power and authority to the states brings in better inclusivity more freedom to the states in framing policies which will suit their ecology considering their historical socio political background etc they can frame their policies better that is the purpose here so elaborate on that and your answer is done and the interesting thing is it is 20 marks uh, paper 2 if you see it's like for all the choice based questions it is like 220 marks and one 10 marker that is how upsc has framed it this time to be examine the impact on administration in view of changing relations between political and permanent executive so political executive we know we are talking about whom we are talking about mlas mps permanent executive we are basically talking about bureaucracy that is impact on administration because of the change in relationship between the two 
so it's a very broad statement very very broad that is right from how psus are functioning to the point of conflicts that have arisen because of mlas and mps being very close to bureaucracy or bureaucracy being very close to mlas mps that will come over here the examples of pandian ias the examples of chief secretary of bengal west bengal ex chief secretary of west bengal all that you can throw in here you can even throw up, uh, throw light on the ias officer was involved in corruption in jharkhand all that you can mention here so how the relationship has evolved plus on top of it today mlas and mps are how they are holding the bureaucracy responsible so especially mps bureaucracy how they are holding responsible especially central i have already told you one yes annual property returns the other one 56j rule 56j these are the ways how control is ensured with regard to the state however it is very very limited in state what we witness today even today is a little bit of nepotism favoritism and the spoil system still exists in few places clear so that you can mention here so what is the need of the hour obviously bringing in principles of the market into it involving nps principles or npg principles which is new public governance including ngos civil society organizations private sector other uh, charitable foundations etc with regard to delivery of goods and services that way we can maintain some sort of neutrality between the relationship in the relationship between political and permanent executive clear people decentralized planning enhances economic development and social justice analyze again a very connected question for 10 marks it has been asked once again democratization decentralization it is so here this time with paper 1 as well as paper 2 the point here is there are similar topics which are getting repeated so when you choose a question also if at all you chose a question or chose two questions which are of very similar in nature it is important that the examples that you give is at least different you theory it is fine you are linking it with the same theory there is nothing wrong with it but if you are linking it with the same example for both the questions that clearly shows you have not prepared well enough so that is what is important here so decentralized planning enhances economic development how so you will have to mention about how planning kept everything centralized and what was the economic development at that point of time then you will have to say once niti ayog came how planning became decentralized things became good better however grassroots level when we check out we see that hardly there has been any change why because of the poor funding that is there decentralized planning won't ensure economic development and social justice if proper financial transfer is not done in the data that i gave you in class i have already told you more than 90 percentage of the funding for urban local bodies or rural local bodies they come from grants from center and state rural, rural be it rural local bodies that is the panchayats or the municipalities the own revenue the source of own revenue the contribution of own revenue for their economic development is very minuscule getting the point here so any amount of decentralized planning will remain only in paper if financial freedom is not there or own finances are not generated clear people taking it further forward the role of state finance commission in the distribution of finances between state and local governments is vital discuss 20 marks like i told you everything is a connected point this again i had given you the entire details like how state finance commissions are not being appointed on time by the state government as a result of which the financial transfer is suffering data you have to provide there now why is it why is such a shoddy job being done the reason being that sent state detests giving transferring power to rural local bodies and urban local bodies states don't like it states want to create a culture of dependency where our rural and urban local bodies are dependent on the state so dependency increases means what both will be waiting for 
grants. Both will be waiting for grants. In addition to this, be it the, the way by which the fund transfer, for any fund transfer to happen, double signing is required. Signing by the IAS officer also is actually required for any sort of fund transfer to happen effectively. And IAS officers are also given the power to remove the panchayat officials at the drop of a hat. So, in such a scenario, State Finance Commission becomes very, very important there. But that is not the only thing. Own revenue needs to be generated. And that own revenue generation, it is very, very limited when it comes to panchayat because they don't have much taxable activity happening in the villages. So, for taxable activity to be there, there should be growth. There should be growth in the, in the sense that manufacturing, industrial activities, etc. should increase for revenue for the government, to, for the urban local body or the rural local body to actually tax the people and generate their revenue, which is not the case. Getting the picture. In addition to this, the other issue that is affecting the state and the local government is not conducting the elections on time, not appointing the state election commission also time. You will mention that because it's a totality. See, for distribution of finances to happen between local government and the state, first and foremost thing is you should have a local government. Getting the point. So, for data for that also I have provided in my notes in the class, you can use that here. Taking it further forward, center state relations are undergoing a drastic change, elaborate 20 marks. So, if you look at it earlier, the question was specifically on GST. Here, they have kept it very broad. They are undergoing a drastic change. So, why are they undergoing a drastic change? What are the reasons? Why are the states fighting or few states fighting? Why are the states, some states are okay with it? So, the objective part is what? The objective part is some are genuine, like they are telling that fund is not getting transferred. Some states are having issues with the fact that cess and surcharge are not being shared. The position of the governor being mis misused. The position of lieutenant governor being misused. All those you can mention. Getting the point. Then states not ready to follow the directions of the center, like how Tamil Nadu government is not ready to implement a new education policy, how Tamil Nadu government wants to exit from NEP, exit from NEET, clear, how uh, West Bengal along with that Karnataka government and many other governments also have decided basically to withdraw the general consent for the CBI because according to them, center is using the central agencies for witch hunting. So, it is creating a very murky and a troublesome uh, environment between the center and the state where people are getting caught in between. Getting the picture here. So, basically, that is the whole picture. That center and some states at least, the things are not going well. It is creating problems and, and especially it creates problems whenever you have to implement a pan-Indian scheme. Case in point being one nation, one ration card. Whenever center comes out with a scheme that is for entire country, there are a few states who are not ready to implement it at the word go. Getting the point here. So, resolving each of this conflict on a case-by-case -case basis is the need of the hour. With, yes, judicial intervention uh, being taken wherever necessary. Clear people? Taking it further forward. There has been a strain in the relations between governor and state governments in the recent past. Elaborate. You will have to give case studies. Especially the governor of TN and the CM. This was one major issue. Then governor of West Bengal also was another issue. Governor of Kerala. As governor, what issues were there? Then also as vice chancellor that also you can mention clear public sector undertakings have been the bedrock of welfareism in india for many decades evaluate the pros and cons of current disinvestment scenario again with facts and data so earlier it was welfareism pro uh, more about uh, taking care of the people rather than being profit oriented. 
where government was not being run like a business because 1950s to 1991 that was the predominant ideology with which we went forward post lpg era we started adopting what npm principles whereby which psus that were running at a loss we either shut it down or we privatized it and that is now continued you can also mention about the strategic sectors apart from the strategic sectors the other psus are going to be privatized or let go of that is the idea clear other than a few sectors let go of the rest pros is what government will run efficiently government will invest its money only in those ventures where they are going to get a return or which has a specific socio economic benefit both are not there there is no point in running it even if it is running for running at a profit what are the cons unemployment unemployment can can shoot up because post covid what has happened is the dependency on government job or the demand for government job has shot up this will increase further competition and can lead to further unemployment because whatever job loss is there in the government sector it is not being adequately compensated in the private sector because of ai getting the point so people social the basic needs safety needs social needs all will remain deprived which will further increase their dissatisfaction getting the point squeeze in those points there job is done the collegium system of appointments to higher judiciary has been the cornerstone of independence of judiciary it has remained as the subject of debate in recent past discussed basically from the first judges case second judges case third judges case fourth judges case being njac that you will mention 20 mark question it is you will even mention how the higher judiciary is appointed in usa and uk where you have you don't judiciary alone doesn't appoint it you have people from the executive you have people from the public other fields also taking part in the appointment process so it's a very transparent process in usa and uk whereas in india the process is not transparent there is no I, even public also doesn't get to know the government also doesn't get to know whose names are being suggested why are they being suggested as of now the only criteria the only objective criteria what they have kept is the senior most person should be appointed to higher judiciary which again has been violated multiple times getting the point here so that you will mention here because it's 20 marks you will mention about the us as well as the uk system the concept of bureaucratic authoritarianism is one of the models of non democratic rules non democratic rules non democratic means you are doing favoritism show me the man i will show you the rule all right so if when you become non democratic you automatically become what bureaucracy being the be all and end all so again give examples of what that ias couple who took their dog out for a walk you can mention that here that is proper proper bureaucratic authoritarianism i also told you the example of a collector who used a very derogatory word against the protesting truck drivers against the new laws he used a very derogatory word and immediately action was taken against him by transferring him so that also you will mention here and you will always mention that today bureaucracy is kept in check not just by the executive or the judiciary but also by social media general media is there along with that social media is also there which is again in consonance with the nps principles because it is not just enough that you follow the rule follow the constitution as per constitution or as per the rule using a derogatory word may not be exactly illegal but it violates the community values it violates the principles of a democratic nation it violates the principles of a classless society clear people that you will mention taking it further forward the constitutional stature provided to the public service commissions accord them the autonomy to work towards fair recruitment comment again public service commission again not a, a surprising thing considering the fact about the puja entire puja ketkar ias episode all right 
so constitutional stature is there so that autonomy towards, towards fair recruitment that is why they are being given the freedom but at the same time like i have told you state public service commissions have been always been guilty of back door appointments in state services generally we will see political appointments supersede appointment by merit which again shows that spoil system which woodrow wilson actually told should not be allowed to continue in bureaucracy continues even today with regard to upsc constitutional it is etc but again it came under it pooja khetkar ias episodes actually indicated the chunks in the armor of selection because if she has done it there is a very good chance that people before her also did it which has forced now upsc to make changes and because it's a constitutional body it can bring changes in the way it conducts the exam and doesn't require a prior parliamentary approval getting the point here so that is what they are going to do bringing in the biometric attendance system clear people so the following year definitely we can expect that in the coming years we can expect there will be a iron curtain scrutiny of all the ews obc handicapped SCST certificates that will be submitted to UPSC or other public service commissions. Write it in that fashion. This is done so as to ensure the trust of the people in the exams and ensure neutrality and meritorious candidates are being selected. Clear people? Taking it further forward. The neutrality of civil service has become a myth comment. Like I told you, repetition this is. Fourth, in the fourth question, we saw almost similar to this bureaucratic authoritarianism. Here it is civil service neutrality. And in paper one also we saw a similar thing. So VK Pandian, you can throw in here. You can throw in here the uh, ex-chief secretary of uh, West Bengal, all that you can throw. At the same time, you can also give examples of neutral IAS officers. So in my class also, I used to tell you Google specifically for high performing IAS officers, Google specifically for non-neutral or IAS officers who are in the news for all the wrong reasons. Keep it with you because you will be needing it not only for your paper, public administration, you can even use it in your ethics paper. Clear people? Examine the role of try in protecting the interests of consumers. Again, expected on expected lines only because with regard to try again, a lot of news articles were coming in the paper. Those of you who are following it, you will be able to answer this question. It's straight away from current affairs. Parliamentary control over public expenditure is declining. Comment. This question again, we have discussed in the class. And this question is strictly to do with what? Strictly to do with CAG reports declining over the years. So CAG report is declining. Public Accounts Committee is not being formed properly, nor they have the time to scrutinize those reports and then submit their findings there. So because of all of that, the control is on the decline. Clear? So that you will mention. Then again, you will have to mention something positive also. However, things are becoming better because now, most of the expenditures, how much money is being spent, etc., are already being put out in the public domain. So, the things, what is what is the need of the hour is the effectiveness. It could be efficient, it could be economic. But the effectiveness part or whether the money is being spent properly or not, that is what we need to know. For which CAG reports have to be, government has to try to see to it that CAG reports are being submitted on time. Taking it further forward. The liberalization, privatization, globalization has enhanced the participation of private sector in Indian economy. Again, very direct question. How private sector has helped? That is NPM. NPM as a philosophy or as a theory of a bad may have started in the 80s or somewhere in the late 70s onwards through Thatcherism, uh, Reaganism, etc. But in India, basically, we started exploring it only post-1991. And with increased private sector, what has happened is private sector has increased today to the point where now recent examples, if you talk about Dharavi rehabilitation program, you have Adani group involved there where Adani group owns 80% stake and government owns only 20%. 
you have plenty of public private partnerships when it comes to construction of highways flyovers etc clear and you also have metro constructions being happening in collaboration with private players you also have x psus being taken over by private players all that you will mention at the same time private sector has also come under the radar for unscrupulousness that is crony capitalism so adani network or ambani and adani ambani etc are names that have been in the news for all for the wrong reasons that is government is fav showing favoritism towards them government is showing uh, only corporates are are being asked to pay lesser taxes whereas middle class is being burdened such allegations are there so okay that level deep i, I forgot uh, 10 marks it is you don't have to go that level deep also so enhanced participation of private sector means you can mention that towards the conclusion side you can mention private sectors performance companies are increasing but they are however they are functioning that should be transparent so that even people also can understand how things are going so especially with regard to uh, adani's involvement uh, the hinderberg report against adani's involvement etc is not conducive for the private sector in the country because wherever there is lack of transparency even with the functioning of private sector it will be a major drawback or it will be a major detester for those people who wants to genuinely come and invest with that you can end the answer the success of administrative reforms in a country like india depends upon the political will come and 20 marks so this is okay this is one question on the administrative reforms which is basically uh, the uh, summary of the major committee reports that have come that is from the first arc the second arc even you can throw in the uh, malimat committee riberio committee uh, justice verma commission so all of that you can provide the only challenge is what compress it and put which were the committees where the recommendations were taken in which were the committees where the recommendations were simply ignored and which are those recommendations of the arc which have not been taken up so far all that you can mention so it all all comes down upon the political will of the government of the day because say for example justice verma commission recommended basically one major change in the one reform in the rape laws of the country which is to make marital rape a punishable offense which was not taken up by the government clear so that like that you can mention it so it's basically a summary the journey of transformation of local governance has been long examine the challenges to realize the spirit of gram swaraj a very direct question once again notes of which i have provided already what are the issues right from state election commission state finance commission excessive domination of ias officers excessive dependency on state government for grants uh, the distance between the headquarters as well as the gram panchayat for the resolution that for any resolution of conflict they have to travel all the way to the headquarters the constant transfers of the appointed officials all of this are the challenges for realizing the spirit of gram swaraj in addition to this the social problems illiteracy etc etc so the disconnect is there disconnect is there whereby which the official at the high point doesn't know the ground reality of gram panchayats clear there is a lot of communication gap there is a lot of hierarchical hierarchical issues also you will mention all of that basically the drawbacks of bureaucracy itself you can put it up over here as the challenges with the facts which was given to you in the notes that you can throw up clear people taking it further forward with what aims and objectives was the capacity building commission established evaluate how far it has come in realizing the goals very direct question again this is about the mission karma yogi what are its objectives etc straight away from the newspaper again again a very expected question this was again provided in the class as notes again so very direct taking it further forward from here the separation of police investigation and prosecution has its own benefits and challenges analyze in context of recent developments this is again with regard to the new criminal laws so separation of police and prosecution has its own benefits and challenges prosecution means what the the lawyer 
who will uh, what is it who will fight for the police that is police would have arrested somebody brought the evidence everything based on that the prosecution will fight the case so two types of systems are there basically one where prosecution is also directly involved every now and then with the investigation so that the prosecution can clearly tell the police what is going to work and what is not going to work second thing is where prosecution stays away from it prosecution gets to know about all the case details much later only after the investigation charge sheet everything has been filed then they get, get the full uh, case about the full case they get it from the cops they read it they examine the evidence then they present the case so two things are there now prosecution when they are involved with the police investigation what happens yes how legally as per the law see police collecting the evidence or arresting the person that is what they will do but how will whether it will whether or not it will stand the test in a court of law if the prosecution is involved things will become better but what is the challenge there the challenge is that the prosecutor is already overburdened and prosecution getting involved at the early stage of the investigation can actually tamper the investigation process where objectivity can get sidelined in with the involvement of the prosecution what will happen is prosecution can actually frame a case against an innocent individual because they know the law cops also know the law combined forces together innocent can get framed it is very easy what is the counter to it the counter is what keeping them separate keeping them separate what is the issue from right from the fir filing to putting up the charge sheet etc it may it can be if it is not done properly on mere technicality the accused can walk out free that is the first and foremost thing not everybody knows how to frame a proper fir which will stand the test in a court getting the point here so the person can easily walk out so that is the issue here both the systems are there in different different parts of the world where prosecution is involved and prosecution is not involved especially in usa and all you have a case where prosecution is involved all right so that is basically the nutshell of the question again this is not something which uh, if you ask me this is not something which is really new this is part of the riberio committee malimath committee recommendations which had come a little earlier clear people in the recent laws what changes have happened based on that they have asked all right again taking it further forward lack of financial resources and independence in managing local funding is hindering the economic and social development of urban areas discuss like i told you same thing with rural areas twice it was asked with urban area also they have asked it this time same answer dependency on state dependency on center lack of own funds extreme dependence on ias officials lack of freedom mayor being just a ceremonial post all of that you can throw in here no scc no sfc give the data answer is done national investigative agency is playing an important role in countering terrorism comment again nia's performance not surprising nia was constantly in news nia as well as ed so in our class discussions again we have mentioned this multiple times but what is the problem here the problem here again is that nia's arrests are the problem not all arrests actually lead to successful conviction courts have sometimes reprimanded nia also for lack of evidence and arresting an individual even before proper evidence is collected on terrorism charges clear so whatever has been there and what is nia's conviction rate that with that you should end the answer nia's conviction is more than 90 percentage and together with ed they are a formidable force in dealing with terrorism as well as financing of terrorism clear taking it further forward police public relations are poor in india what measures are required to strengthen race relations janmaitri online filing of fir quick conviction from the courts e courts all these are necessary to improve the relationship then one more thing is to reduce the under trials that is also important because once you are arrested and you are thrown in jail for a petty offense what happens you remain in jail for a too, for too long you become disillusioned with the system so everything right from arrest filing an fir i mean that is a supreme court ruling where 
एफ आई आर हेज टू बी गिवन विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर अवर्स ऑफ रजिस्टरिंग अ कंप्लेन विच इज हार्डली फॉलोड बाई एनी पोलिस स्टेशन इन इंडिया सो दैट ऑल यू विल हैव टू मेन्शन क्लियर टेकिंग इट फर्दर फॉरवर्ड The office of the CAG of India and its functioning is away from the public eye. Still, it is one of the most important office under the Constitution. Discuss what I told you earlier. CAG. What is the problem with CAG? Not scrutinizing the reports enough. Not submitting the reports enough. As a result of which, PAC's functioning has also been diluted. That you will mention with introduction, obviously, of CAG. What it is? What is its which under which article it comes? All of that you will mention here. Clear and with the proper data. Taking it. further forward critically examine the problems of administration in coalition regimes briefly under prime minister's office we had mentioned coalition but here in full swing they have asked so what is the problem there policy paralysis that is the first and foremost problem then unstable government government can collapse at any point of time best example the 90s third point international example also because here only they are talking about administration in coalition regime so coalition regimes kept on coming in france anybody who was following the french election they would have seen it in france <coughs> basically first republic second republic third republic now today they are in the fourth republic why the fourth republic had to come because the third republic it was all about coalition governments no party was getting a majority so finally they had to bring in they bring in a new change which was what the fourth republic were president had maximum powers so as to ensure stability getting the point here so that international example also you will mention can we adopt the same thing in india very much possible very much very much possible if in the future coalition governments keeps coming that are not stable getting the point here india faced that instability issue during the 90s and basically people had written off that no party will get majority single majority henceforth thanks to 2004 and 2009 election but 2014 and 2019 proved that single party victory is still possible 2024 again reverse the trend where coalition government government started coming into power again getting the point here so the problems of administration corruption you can mention lack of continuity in policies you can mention oh, okay it's again 10 marks only so little bit of elaboration is enough clear people that much you mention answer is over because this is almost like you are in too many informal groupings are there as a result of which no decision will take place formal communication is less informal communication is more that is the paper one theory that you can add over here once again the telegram channel anything that you find odd or anything that you find difficult you can contact me here apart from that any other any question that you found that you know you want better points in it or you want to write and uh, you want a better elaboration etc or certain topics that you feel should be taken in addition to this put it up in the comment section based on the consumers that is the user demand we will maybe discuss it with the management and then make a video of it and publish it right in this channel itself clear people so once again let me tell you focus on the most important topics first especially to my students whatever we have discussed in class whatever notes i have given you focus on that i agree there are certain topics which have come from current affairs itself but that you will have to do you will have to read the papers you will have to stay updated it is very 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 important in addition to this any other topic that you feel needs some elaboration like i said you can contact me in the telegram channel or you can put it up in the comment section below all right people all the very best keep practicing your answers send it to me i will review them and send it to you back take care all the best